you, this is another day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. I tried sad and hurt my bones, but the joy of the Lord is our strength. We're going to go to the Lord in prayer. Oh, gracious Father, we come approaching your throne of grace through your son, Jesus. Come another way to come. First of all, we just want to thank you, Lord. Thank you for your loving kindness. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you for your goodness and your stretched out hand to deliver and to let the captives go free, Lord. Lord, we pray for wisdom, knowledge, and understanding concerning your word this afternoon, Lord. Help us, God, that we won't add nothing to it. Help us, Lord, that we won't take anything away from it. But God, that we're right and divided by your spirit. And by your great power, we ask in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, Lord. Lord, we pray for those who have coronavirus. Irata, Reshema, Reshekatarakaira, Roshema, Omicron, Monkeypox. Amen. And virus gone uh, against the children, Lord, that's out now. Four and five K. The handwriting is on the wall, Lord. Help us to repent and come back to you. Let prayer come back in the school. Commandment back in the courthouse. Lord, have mercy on our souls and help us, Lord. And these lies and even days. Amen. We pray for those in the Father, Republican, Democrats, Lord. Let there be peace in the White House, Lord. Let there be peace in our house. Those that are not saved in that White House will be saved. Those are not saving our house, Lord, that you're saving, Lord. A special prayer for Jesus, the Holy Bible says, and all the members, Lord. Brother Charles Butler, Lord. Amen. Bless God as he after, amen, have that situation done, Lord, concerning his mouth, Lord. Be with him, God. Let your healing nature flow through his mouth, Lord. Amen. His brother, amen, Mike Butler, amen. Tell me he got some things going on with him, Lord. Amen. We, we pray that you show out. Show up, Lord, in our life. We're the thing we got to deal with, Lord. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. All the members, Lord. In Jesus' wonderful name, God. As you supply all of our needs according to your rich and glory. By Christ Jesus. In Jesus' name. And everybody say, Amen. 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 Give the Lord hands up, amen. Thank God. Amen. In the house again. Been working. Amen. Bless God. Thank God. He done made it back. Yes, sir. We got a subject here that I have been asking y'all to pray for me all on meditation. Mm. Meditation. Now, I dealt with this before, but we're going to deal with it a different way. Because I got more knowledge. I got more what? Knowledge. When you get more knowledge, you just give more. Yeah. You give less knowledge, you give less. It works like that. The less knowledge you have, the less knowledge you can give. You can't give no more than what you got. That's right. So I always like looking for more because I know uh, much is given. Much is required. God going to require more out of you. The more he gives you, he requires more out of you. It don't make you better than anybody else. It make you have to put out more. So the word meditation means deep uh, con con contemplation. He's thinking about something. Uh, it's, turning, it's turning around over your mind. Meditation. You meditate on things you don't even know you're meditating on. That's why we're going to deal with meditation. Because a lot of times people always meditate. You always meditate on something. <laughs> something rolling around in your mind. Yes, sir. It's something like, what is good or evil. It's rolling around in that. Yeah. Uh, but here we want to we want to find, and we're going to give you two sides of meditation. Because the last time I dealt with it, I just gave one side. We're going to give you the good side and the bad side. So that way you know if you meditate on the bad side, that's consequences. That's right. So you don't want to do that. You don't want to meditate on things that's bad. Yes, All right. So we see that it's around in the mind to gain uh, greater understanding and be changed by God's truth. So when I meditate on, a, on God's truth, it changed the way I think. Mm -hmm. It'll change the places I go. Mm. It'll change the people I run with, used to run with. So meditation is good when you use it correctly, when you use it to help you to change. God's word to do that thing. It'll 
change the way your mind thinks. All right, coming to page 703. Page 703 of Psalm 19 and 14. Psalm 19 and 14. Psalm 19 and 14, page 703. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be what? Except in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. This is David praying and asking God for his meditation to be right. Because you can have wrong meditation in the in a, in a presence of God. Who looks at the heart? God. Who, who looks on the outer fear? Man. Man. Man looks on the outer fear. He don't know nothing. But God looks on the inside of us to see what's going on. So he can see what man can't see. Now, we can be a food inspector and check the man's fruit by his life, All right. by, he, by the way he lived. The Lord tells us to do that. Yeah. He says, uh, Lord, how much that? He tells us to, to wash their fruits. Now, there's a reason for me to wash their fruits, so I'll, that way I won't be doing what they do. Amen. I won't be meditating on things that they may be meditating on that's wrong. Yeah. So if I meditate on the right thing and I be a food inspector, I'm going to follow what the Word of God says about how to do that right. How to do that particular situation. His Word will tell you how to do everything in your life. All you got to do is go and meditate on His Word. And He'll show it to you in the Word. Amen. That's God. And we're going to see that His law and amen, His commandments are the things that we really need to meditate on. And we're going to see that, Lord, how much of God. That David, amen, bless God. Uh, page 694, if he had kept meditating on the law, he wouldn't have got himself in trouble. So we're going to give you the, the, the one side of what David telling us to do, but we're going to give you the other side he didn't do it. And what was the consequences of him meditating on the wrong thing? Hmm. Oh, it's off the change today. Again. Amen. Uh, page 694, Psalms. One and one. This is the man that walking down the council of the ungodly. Now stand in the way of sinners. Now sit it in the seat of the scoffer. So I think the word scoffer means uh, he does not join those who make fun of the law and his law. Some people make fun. That's what scoffer. They make fun of the law. Yeah. Uh, they make fun of God. Y'all yeah, see jokes a lot of times. Yeah. yeah joked about the churches and mm -hmm. making fun of what God would say. Yeah. That's just, that's joking, that's a scoffer. Mm -hmm. And don't sit in their seat. Amen. And, and, and don't stand in the way of sinners. You can stand in the way of the sinner when you sin. Mm -hmm. You're supposed to be hitting the sinner. Yeah, you but you're in that way. Yeah. Preacher, beacon, yeah. choir member. Uh, Lord, let me get back with you. Lord, let me know. Uh, second verse. But his delight is in the law of the law. What he delight in? The law. The law. So when, when you delight yourself in the, in the law of the law, look at it say, and uh, his law, do I what? Meditate. When? Day and night. Day and night. And we're going to see if David didn't do that. He didn't meditate on God's law. Now he said it to do it. So I can tell you how to do something. But if I don't do it, will it work for me? No. It ain't going to work for me. But I can tell you now, if you end up doing it, it'll work for you. So let's look at it closely at how we need to meditate and what we need to think on is God's law. Day and what? Night. And night. So when you in a trial, when you're in a situation of testing, meditate on God's law. Meditate on his commandment before you do anything. Check it out before you act on it. And find out how it's going to change your life. Look at that third verse. There's benefits now when I meditate on God's law dead, now I get benefits. Third verse, it should be like a tree planted by the what? Rivers of water. Rivers of water that bring forth its fruit in, in its season. So God's law and his commandment brings forth season. And then it brings forth fruits. It produced fruits out of me. What come was in you got the what? Come out. It's gonna come out of you. So now it produces fruits, and now it's coming out. His leaves should not wither, but whatsoever you do shall what? Prosper. Whatever you do, according to God's meditation 
shown his law of doing it to do that, and you're going to prosper. Can anybody stop you? Mm -hmm. Can't nobody can stop you from prospering but you. But yourself. So I have to meditate on the right thing for me to prosper. I understand that now. I got an understanding. Amen. I got an understanding from the Word of God. And my understanding became fruitful. And what, how I can prosper. And if God is with you, ain't nobody can be against you. Nobody can stop you from prospering because of your meditation on who you're thinking, what you're thinking on. The ungodly are not so, but they like to shout with the wind driving away. So do the ungodly think on God's law? No, sir. No, ungodly don't think on God's law. No, sir. That's why they do the thing they do. That's why they're ungodly. That's why they that's just a can't make no plan in that. That's why they're ungodly. Because they're not, they're not thinking on God's law to do it. Don't just be a hearer of the word. But a doer. But be a doer. Then Jesus Christ said do and then teach you. I wonder why you put do before teach. Well, that's why that way you can teach it after you do it. Yeah, because you're you more skillful in yeah. teaching it. Yeah, you can't. You can't teach something you've never done. Well, you go and teach something and you, you end up being a hypocrite because you're not doing it. And you got people trying to get people to do it, but you're not doing it. That's a hypocrite. You know to do it. And don't. But you don't do it. And then you're teaching them how to do it. Now it's going to benefit them. They ain't going to benefit you. So that's why you want to be an individual that's going to be a doer of it and then teach it. Because you've been taught how to do it, so you act on it by faith. Fifth word. Therefore, the Lord God should not stand in the judgment. What are they going to end up at? They ain't going to even be in the judgment. Yeah, they're going to be in hell. They be in hell. They already judged. They already judged. They're not even in the household of God. The ungodly, the ungodly person is not in God's house. And, and God judgment going to begin at the household of God. To clean his house out because he got some people inside of his house he got to take out. All right, man. Because they, they haven't been what? Meditating. Oh, yeah, I'll catch this lesson. They haven't been meditating on this law to do it. So now he got to take them out because they've been meditating on some other stuff to do that was against God. And we're going to give you, we're going to give it right to you over here. Not, I ain't got time to play with your soul. So I'm going to give it to you just like the word said it. How to meditate. Thou art God not so, but a like a shaft which the wind driving away. Therefore, thou art God should not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. No, who? Not sinners. Amen. If y'all told me one saved, I always say was I got Jesus Christ. Yeah. While I was doing this study, here's what I come up with. People can confess the word of God. They can make their confession. And they can have faith. But what if you don't do it? Works is it any good? good? No, faith without works is dead. Faith without works is dead. So you got people today are being taught how to confess the word. You got people are taught how to have faith in the word, but how many are being taught to do it? Hmm. You ain't got a whole lot of teaching on doing it. So what you're saying is that they, they're being taught to, to have faith. They're being taught to, you know, so they're being taught to get there, but they're not being taught to stay there. That's it. You got it, Brother Joe. You got it, Brother Joe, sir? They're taught how to get there because they got it. Because of faith, I do that. Faith, I'll get you something. Right. But, to, but to keep it, you have to do it. All right, so you can get it. That's just good. Oh. And that's what people get to, how people get to see this when they get it. Mm -hmm. Think they, they have got faith it. To get it. Yeah. They spoke it. Yeah. Came to pass. But they didn't do it, so now they can't keep it. That's why the ungodly or the sinners, they're not going to stay in God's the house. There's no way that you can stay in the house of God being like that because you didn't do it. So we're going to let you know how doing is very important when you meditate to do it. You want to meditate to do it, to forgive, to love. You want to get shipwrecked. Now, sinners in the congregation of the righteous, they're not, they're, going to, they're not going to stay in the congregation of the right. They went to right the sinners are. They're in the household of God. So the sinners are in the, in the, in the house of God, but they, they can't stay there. And that's what Brother John brought out earlier, how to keep it. 
not to just get saved, but how to what? Stay saved. Stay saved. You got to learn how to stay saved in this, this world. You got to learn how to what? Paul said, if you, if you draw back my heart, ain't going to be with you. Now, that's Paul writing. I wonder why pretty people are just picking out some of the things Paul writing. But Paul wrote that to me. Let me tell that. Ah, uh, Lord, have mercy. Look at that sixth line. For the Lord knoweth that the way of the righteous, but the way of the ungodly shall what? Perish. Now, he said, I'm going to destroy them. They're going to perish. So I have to meditate on being godly and righteous and keeping this law and commandment will show me that, that I am righteous. I am godly by obeying his commandments to forgive, to love. Amen. To love God with all my heart, soul, mind, and strength, and love my neighbor as I love myself. Amen. Then knowing what the Ten Commandments said. Knowing what the Ten, ten, ten Commandments said helps me to meditate on that. Amen. The first commandment is, Thou shalt not have any other gods before me. The second commandment is, Thou shalt not make any image of likeness of anything in heaven above where Jesus Christ comes from. Hey, you got some white Jesus man is making. You got some black Jesus man making. And and the law says you don't do that. Don't you make any likeness of anything in heaven above, on the earth, under Beneath the earth, under the earth, under the waters, under the earth. He covered every ground. Don't make any any likeness of that. He said, "I'm a God and a jealous God." Then the nickel to the father to the third and fourth generation of the children of, uh, and to their children and them that hate me and shall Mercy to thousands of them that love me and keep my commandments. So you know where mercy is coming from? It's coming from those that want to keep his commandments. So if they fall any kind of direction, he's able to bring them back up because that's what they want. They want to keep it, but sometimes they fall in the wrong direction. So then they repent and come back to God and get right with God and then seek God, amen, to overcome that. You don't want to go back and let the thing beat you up again what you fell in. You want to be able to get you some power and authority over it. And Jesus Christ said, I gave it to you. I gave you power and authority over all the works of the devil. I gave, I gave you that. And I gave you my arm. I gave you pride and trusting. So now the third commandment is, amen, Lord, how much I want it. Uh, we're going we're gonna to see how with David. And then I learned some other things in, in studying about David. He broke more than just two commandments. <laughs> my last study was he just broke two. Then I got, uh, he broke some more. He broke four of them totally. And we're going to see it in the world. That came out of the study. Wow. Uh, the more you study, the more you learn. It just happened like that. Murder, adultery. Yeah, you, 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 you just get more. And then I didn't know they gave false witness. Hey, Amen. That was, yeah. that was hey, it, it, his leaders gave false witness about what happened. Yeah, that's three. And okay. they broke a commandment. So anytime you follow people breaking commandments, guess what? If they are leaders, they're going to lead you to break commandments. That's right. You got to separate yourself. You got to separate. That's it, brother John. Separate yourself and meditate yeah. on what God law said. So, Pastor, we we know he committed murder. We know he committed adultery, false witness. Um, okay. It'll come. Hey, hey, uh, I'm going to bring you to the Word. You're going to get the rest of it. Okay. Get a lot of hands back for you. We're going to see it in the Word. It's going to be so plain. Don't jump say, God, I didn't even see that. But the Lord opened your eyes to David and this evening. Amen. Let's go. Amen. Get a lot of other hands back here. God's an awesome God. Let's go now, amen, to page um, 414. Second Samuel eleven and two. Second Samuel eleven and two, and that's gonna be page four fourteen. And here's you're gonna find out, and this here, Amen. You're gonna find out what's going on, Amen. Cause we're gonna we're gonna get it right, right from the word, Amen. That's eleven and two. It came to pass in the evening time that David arose from off his bed and walked upon the roof of the king's house, and from the roof he saw a woman washing herself, and the woman was very beautiful to look upon. Is he meditating on the law? No. no. Who is meditating on? Not but she. Yeah. So you get distracted. You can get distracted in here if you don't know how to meditate. Mm -hmm. 
And, our, and David rose day and night. So we know he ain't doing no meditating on no law. Early in the morning, he up there looking on the roof and looking at a woman that ain't his wife. And David sent and inquired after the woman and said, Is not this Bathsheba, the daughter of Elon, the wife of Uriah the Hittite? So did he know? Yes. yes. He acknowledged who she was. Covetness. So he, he told her. Covet. Huh? Covetness, Sister Kim said it. Yeah, that's another one, yeah. Y'all get that, y'all, before I even get that, y'all getting it. Uh -huh. The first one he dealt with was lust. The first one he dealt with was lust. Yep. Well, well, the first one, he, he, he did deal with lust, yeah, but that's not in the Old Testament, in the New Testament. Oh, okay. He coveted. He, oh, coveted, he coveted her. Okay. With her, with his, she, with his in the New Testament, talk about lust, but you don't see okay. it talking in the commandments of God about lust. So God added to the things in the New Testament. Mm -hmm. So what you can use that, Sister Kim. Um, you can use that. We, we can put that in there. Hey, Amen. Because it's in, the, it's in the New Testament mm -hmm. that we go and pull it out and what, add it to David's transgression. But wouldn't covetness be? Yeah, well, you covet the man who wants it. Well, but you first, it. before you, before, because you got to, you see it. You want You got to see it before you. Covetness is something you want. It's right. It's a lustful desire. But you, you see it. it first, all right? Yeah. You covet, you, so you. Well, you, lust can show up and then you can covet it. Yeah, because that's what's gonna draw you that lust. <laughs> you you lust after, and then you cover it. You want it. Lust is dealing with. But the, but so wait now, but hold on. You can't you can't lust after something you don't see. You got to see it first. You see it. That's when the lust comes, and then that's when you cover it. Yeah, it, uh, the you lust comes first, and then you cover it. When you see it, you lust. lust. Right when you now, see lust. It. Yeah, you yes. see it, you, you see lust, it. and then you come. Right. You want because you know I'm just saying you you don't you don't lust until you see something to lust after something you want it, right? But well, to want it, you when, see when you see it, it, then you want it. It's a process. It is a process. It is a process. It is a process. Is a process. Lust you have to start first. First, lust you before your own lust and time yeah, drawn you away to your own lust. So if you destroy the lust, can you cover it? No, no, you can't. Can you, you cover something you destroy? No, it's calling won't. you to lust. No, you won't. Now come. David is busting here. Right. That's good. I'm glad he brought it out. Can we can use yeah. that? Amen. Oh, he definitely lusted. I mean, covered it, but he covered it. He saw it. He okay. saw her. And when he, huh? and it, the scriptures speak of it, her beauty. She was good to look, look upon. At, her, yeah. Upon, yeah. And she did meditate on what? The, the Lord. Word. <laughs> he didn't meditate on it. So that's the mistake he made here. Right. I want y'all to catch the mistake. So we're going to make it. These things are written for our learning. Mm -hmm. That's what the scripture said. These things are written for us to learn. Mm -hmm. So we won't lust like he did or covet like he did or take the man's wife. That's stealing. Yep, they said it, Sister Kim. That's another one. Yep. Not should not steal. steal. He stole. Yeah. That's he another stole one. He stole that woman. Yep. You know what else? With this situation when he got on that rooftop and saw how beautiful she was, all he had to do was flee fornication. Run. Run to the bathroom. That's not good. And right. the scripture tell you to do that. So did he meditate on that? No. no. See, I don't know if he had all, well, they didn't have all that at the time. They didn't have all what we got today. See, that's added to in the New Testament. Testament. Right. So let's not, let's not charge him something he didn't know nothing about. But he did still, though. But let's charge him with something he didn't know. Stole. He stole. He knew the commandments of God. He broke the commandments. Amen. Let's deal with that. Amen. Because now we don't want to put too much on David because he didn't have that knowledge. Like, we got more knowledge. And you was the knowledge we got. <laughs> we got more knowledge than David and David. Yep, you, you know, know you got more knowledge than David and David huh? me. Because we got more information in the wow. New Testament how you can oh see it. So you meditate on not to do. You meditate not to do that because you have knowledge that if you do that, the sin can destroy you. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Yes, sir. Who get the glory? God. How much of Oh, Yeah, we're going to be glory with you, Lord. We don't know nothing. So well, let, let, let's stay with what, what David knew about the law. All right. All right, that's the Ten Commandments. Okay. Uh, and David sent messengers and took her, and she came in unto him. Now, he knew he knew that she was, a, she was married. That's a All right? So then he took her. That's what you call adultery. 
Ask breaking the seventh commandment. Thou shalt not commit adultery. So he broke the seven here. Okay. And then, uh, Lord, have mercy, God. He, he meditated on the wrong thing here. So we don't want to meditate on the wrong thing. And you want to see it, what it costs him. It costs him something. His child. And he laid with her, for she was purified from her uncleanness, and she returned unto her house. So I put here in that fourth verse, uh, did she struggle? No. no. She didn't try to stop David. <laughs> she went with it. That was the king. So though. David laid her in the sin. Of course. What a weak self. What a what? Weak self. What a weak self. Sisters, y'all need to stop being weak out there. Stop okay. What? Okay, now let's go back to, now this, during this time now, this was the king. So let's not put her, you know, I mean, if she wouldn't have went, she could have lost her life. Uh, we don't want to make no excuses. I'm not time. making excuses. We don't want to make no excuses. Well, I mean, but just like you told wrong. Sister Kim, excuses that we're not going to put, we're not going to put much, you know, too much on David because he didn't know. That's what you said. About the love. Now, right. he knew about adultery. Oh, yeah. He knew the he law. He knew this was wrong, So we going to put that on him. Right. Oh, this is on him. This and is on her. David and the woman. I and agree. the woman struggled. No, she didn't struggle. So what we want to do is put it on wherever it goes, no. whatever the shoe fit on. We ain't taking no, we ain't making this thing no excuse for people to sin. None. There's no need for it. She knew it was wrong. She shouldn't have gave herself over to the king and stood on the ground and rebuked the devil out of, death, out of, out of David. He wasn't operating in the spirit of God. Were you operating in God's spirit? Not at all. Come on, let's go through the scripture today. Not at let's, all. Let's check out some fruit and don't make excuses for people to do wrong. We ain't doing that here. Well, David, what, what Adam said. That what woman, he did wrong. That woman you gave. Hey, that woman you gave the Lord. Yeah, if you wouldn't have gave me the woman, Lord, I would have done wrong. He blamed God. And the woman. And the woman. Did it work? Not at all. Blame game don't work with God. Let's get that straight first. It might work with the people. You might you might use excuses to the people and they'll go along with you. And it don't work with God. That's what we want to deal with, with God right now. Will it work with him? And we want to ask ourselves, will this thing, if I give you an excuse why I sin, will it work with God? No, it's not going to work with me. But it'll work with the, some people. Some people. But some preachers. It shouldn't. If you're a fruit inspector, it shouldn't work, huh? Huh? If you're a fruit inspector, it shouldn't work. And you got to be strong to be a fruit inspector. you got to be living. you got to be a doer. What you got, Sister Kim? I was just thinking about the king. You know, Mr. John was talking about how the kings have authority. You know, Meshach and, you know, Daniel and them, when they were thrown in the lion's den, they didn't fear the king. They obeyed God. Yeah. And then with David, I'm not David, Joseph, he fled from the case. When they tried to lay with him, he fled. He didn't yeah. care about the consequences. He had to do what was right by God. So we had to, we had an Old Testament for our example. So we can make better and wiser decisions. And better decisions. Now, they didn't bow down to the king. He had authority. Mm -hmm. But it wouldn't go down. That's a good example of, of how to stand against those that have authority. Mm -hmm. Not to go along with them. So the woman never struggled. She went along with sin. She did that. Did that please God? Not at all. Well, we're going to see it didn't because he killed that child. God did. Look at this verse. And the woman conceived and sent and told David, oh, oh David, you in trouble. You, I, I got a child for you now. And said, I am with child. Now David's going to think on how to do something wrong. Once you start in sin and you don't try to stop it, it leads to nothing. Notice how it works. If you don't stop sinning your life, it always leads to another sin that you're going to end up doing. And David said to Job, 
saying, send me Uriah the Hittite, and Job sent Uriah to David. Now he's going to use Job, J-O-A-B. He's going to use this man to accomplish his evil doing. This man here could have stood against him. Just because you're a king, that doesn't mean you got to go do wrong. And when you are was come unto him, David demanded of him how Joab did, and how the people did, and how the war prospered. Aver. And David said to Uri, Go down to thy house, wash thy feet, and Uri departed out of the king's house, and now followed him in midst of, of meat from the king. Now here the king go try to bribe him. Try to bribe him, give him something to eat, and get him drunk. So he, can, so he can have sex with his wife. Mm -hmm. Now you're going to find this man is a faithful man to the men that he was working with and to the king. But David wasn't faithful to the man. So you have to be faithful to God yourself. Mm. If people are not faithful to God, you see them doing all kinds of crazy things in the church, don't follow them people. They ain't got no fear of God. Uh, that's what I'm going to say there, Lord. And look at it nice, Lord. But Uriah slept at the door of the king's house with all the servants of his lord and went not down to his house. This man would not go down. Watch what he said about this. I'm talking about Uriah. Watch what he tell the king. And when he had told David, saying, Uriah went not down into his house, David said, Uriah comest down not from thy journey? Why didst thou not go down into thy house? So they, at first this stuff didn't work. They tricked the man to go have sex with his wife, and then they can blame the child on him. God, God watching all this. Who looking at it? God. See, God ain't going to stop you from doing wrong. Let me say it again. God ain't going to stop you from If you want to do wrong, break his commandments. He'll look at you and check you out. Mm -hmm. Now, if you call on him, will he save you? Mm -hmm. If you find out you're getting ready to do this thing, and whosoever called on the name of the Lord, mm -hmm. you can be saved from that that you're getting ready to do if you know how to call on Jesus before you do it. Let me say it here, Lord. And the eleventh verse, and Uriah said unto David, and I let you to tell him something here now, the ark in Israel and Judea abide in tents. And my Lord Job and thy servant of my Lord are encamped in an open field. Boy, this man is a man of God. Shall I stand go into my house? All this happening to my friends out there. Things are going bad for them out there in the war. To eat and to drink and to lie with my wife. Watch what he say here. As thou livest and as thy soul liveth, I will not do this thing. I'm not going home to have fun and pleasure with my wife, with my men out there fighting in the war. <laughs> That's a true soldier. A true man. Of God. <laughs> well, that's it, Brother John. You caught it. That's a true what? Man of God. That's a true servant to the king. Mm -hmm. But yet the king not being true, true to him. Right. He has nothing to do with he's 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 standing on his own. He's dealing with it his way. And he could have went and had fun. You know how people want to have a little fun with sex. He could have done that, but he wouldn't do it. Now, bless myself here, Lord. And then David said to Uriah, Terry, here today also. Now you gotta go think of something else to do now. And tomorrow I will let thee depart. So Uriah abided in Jerusalem that day and in the morrow. 13 brethren, when David had called him, he, he did eat and drank before him. Now you're gonna try to get him drunk. <laughs> you know, when you get drunk, you, you want to go do something. Hey, you want to go have some fun. 
which he made. He did eat and drink before him, and he made him drunk, as David did this to this man, to try to get him to go to his house. And at evening he went out to lie on his bed with the servant of his Lord, but went not down to his house. He made him drunk, and he still wouldn't go down to his house. What you said earlier, Brother John, is a true word. A true servant, after you got him drunk, he still wouldn't do it. After you set him up. He, he had a lot of God in him. Yeah, he had, You're had right. a lot of God in him. He had a lot he, of God in him. Did this man here meditate? He must have been, he must meditate on God's law to fulfill it. Because you can see the fruits of this man's life. He Meditation is power when you do it right. And people can't convince you to go do wrong. Mm -hmm. It wasn't wrong with him to go lie with his wife. It wasn't wrong with him to go drink. But it was wrong with him to go in and, and he gets blamed for something David did wrong. Wow. And he ain't just started that. That, that didn't just happen. He's, that man's been that way. Yeah. By the fruits that he's showing now. Yeah, the fruits. You can see his fruits is good. Yeah. That's the kind of man you want on your team. Somebody that's faithful to God. Wow. Not down to his house, looking at 14 verse. And it came to pass in the morning that David wrote a letter to who? To Job. To Job and sent it by who? The people. To not any of the people. To the hand of Uriah. He said the hand of Uriah. And Uriah don't even know what's in the letter. You're going to see the next verse was in the letter. Mm -hmm. And David had enough nerve to say it by you, right? Because you know, you, right, wouldn't go read that letter. Because he's a faithful man. Yeah. He wouldn't take a peek and see what the letter was about. 15 verse. And he wrote in a letter saying, now look what he wrote in a letter. Set ye out, you ride in the front floor of the hottest battle and retreat, and yet from him that he may be smitten and what? Uh, now, David get ready to kill him. What, what's the, what commandment is that? Thou shalt not kill. All right, now, thou shalt not kill. So, thou shalt not kill would be the sixth commandment. All right, so now he didn't he broke uh, the seventh, now he didn't broke the sixth. We're going to just stay with the Old Testament because he wasn't doing it in the New Testament. So we're going to just stay with the Old right now. All right, so here, he broke two commandments already. Adultery and murder. Now, adultery and murder. Adultery seven, murder six. Look at 16, verse. And it came to pass when God observed the city that he assigned you rhymes to a place where he knew that the valid men were. were. So he set you are up according to what David wanted. Mm -hmm. So Joab gone along with what is wrong. And Sister Kim brought out earlier the three Hebrew boys wouldn't bow before the king. So just because they got authority, you don't have to go do wrong. I don't care what kind of authority they got. Partaking another man's As if you faithful to God. Uh, if you what? Faithful to God. It makes a difference who you faithful to. So Joab was faithful to David instead of to God. He went along with David's plot. Look at 18, Brian. Then Joab sent and told David all the things concerning the war and charges the messenger, saying, When thou hast made an end of telling the matter of the war unto the king. Now, this is a lie here. The 20th verse, I'm going to show you that they lied in another verse that wasn't the truth what they said. Mm. Huh? 17. 17? Mm. Thank you, Brother Mike. And the men of the city went out and fought with Job, and there fell some of the people of the servant of David, and Uriah the Hittite died also. So he killed more than just Uriah. Mm -hmm. No. When they but to make back. it look like. To make yeah, it when look. they pulled back, he killed more than just Uriah. That was it was a servant. It was his own people. It That's when you get to getting sinning. When you get to sinning, you don't stop sinning until you stop sinning. 
When you stop sinning? When you stop sinning. <laughs> if you keep sinning, you gotta repent. You're gonna just keep sinning. One sinner leads to another sin. Now, that 20th verse will get rid of a lot. Thank you, Brother Mike. And if so be that the king's right arise. Now, he's yeah, like David mad. He ain't mad about nothing. And it said unto thee, wherefore approached ye so nigh unto the city when ye did fight. Now, they're saying in the report that he got close to the city. And that's how he died. Look at that. Know ye not that they will shoot from the wall? He didn't die with them shooting from the wall. He died from them retreat yep. and left them out there to fight the end. Yep. They didn't fight that. They didn't tell that report. <laughs> so they give bad reports today of what happened in the service. <laughs> until they get caught. <laughs> until, they, until they what? Until <laughs> some of them get caught. caught. And they going to get caught. <laughs> they going to get caught. 21 five. He wrote Amalash, the son of Jephthah, did not a woman cast a piece of millstone upon him from the wall? So they're using scriptures here mm -hmm. that it happened in the Old Testament to justify the wrong they did. I'm telling you, I got more out of this lesson. Because I've studied more. And I end up with more. That he died in Teshbah. While wait ye nigh uh, the, the wall. Then that thou, thy servant Uri Hittite, is dead also. So then they lied in the report. 22nd verse. So the messenger went and came and showed David all that Job had sent unto him. So here they told a lie. That's a night commandment. So when you run with other people that are sinning, you're going to sin too. But that's bear false witness. That bear false witness is the ninth commandment. That's a lie. False witness is a what? A lie. A lie. And the scripture says a lie you won't tarry in the sight of God. One lie won't tarry God. See, God is holy. Now, people, people think they can just keep sinning against God. God, you, you better watch out what you're doing out there. The way the sin is death, that it can you keep praying with it. And here we see that David didn't get himself in some trouble here. It's going to cost him something. But doing all this foolishness he did. Because he didn't meditate on God's law day and night. You're on the housetop looking at a woman. Lord, have mercy, God. Uh, 23rd verse. And the message said that they assured the man prevailed against us and came out unto us into the field. And we were upon them even unto the entire entering of the gate. And the shooters shot from off the wall. No, he going to lie again. Upon thy servant and some of the king's servant be dead. And the servant you ride he died, he, he dead also. So when they retreated with more than just him, it had other men die because of their plot. Mm -hmm. There wasn't in on the plot. They didn't know. They didn't know. That's up, man. Then David said unto the messenger, then shall thou say to Job, let all these things displease thee. Don't let this please thee. You put it in line. Let so not. Line. Pastor, let not this thing. Let, don't let these things displease thee. He's telling Job like he did, you know, because uh, he wrote that false report. Mm -hmm. He wrote number, number, the ninth commandment, a uh, false witness. So he got on along with them. Let not this thing displease thee, for the sword devoured one as well as the other. Make thy battle more strong against the city, and overthrow it, and encourage thou him. <laughs> you talking about encourage Job, baby. He ain't, he ain't sad about nothing, because he's the one set up the clock. Uh, now people try to make things be like it is when it's not. Wow. Lord, how much he got. And when the wife of Uriah heard that Uriah's husband was dead, she mourned for her husband. She did what? Mourn. Oh. Yeah, I bet she did. She, <laughs> she, she pretended. You think she was faking? <laughs> you know how women can make it believe like that. Don't do it, man. Y'all know what I'm talking about. 
Yeah, we know. And it don't be real. No, it don't. Does it be real, Sister Kim, sometimes? No. When y'all be. We be faking. <laughs> I got to go to Sister Kim and say, ask Sister Kim about it. Well, I could. <laughs> <laughs> it don't be real I sometimes. Could. So, man, watch out. And, 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 and just do right with God. <laughs> if they're pretending, just do what is right and love them. And forgive them. Yeah. 27 verse. And when the morning was past, David said, now nah, she, she do morning. David said and fetched her to his house and he became what? Right. Thou steal. Yeah. Thou should not steal. He stole that woman from her husband. I tell you, we're going to give you another one still in here. We're going to just stay with the Ten Commandments. And bow him his son, but the thing that David had done to please what? The Lord. Was God happy with it? Not at all. All the stuff he pulled, he broke three commandments right there. And we're going to see, and then bless God, Lord have mercy, Four. that God was not pleased with that. Four, Pastor. Huh? Four. Four? What is that four? Stealing. Huh? Stealing. Killing. Stealing. Huh? Stealing. He stole. That he man. stole. Stealing. That's, that's four. Yeah, that was in that okay, that's four. Right. Thank you, Brother John. I know I hit, we had four in there. Yes, sir. All right, now, I wonder why God ain't going to talk to him. Because he's sin. He's in sin. Sin separates you from what? From God. Now, who are you getting ready to sin? Who? Oh, uh, sin. who God getting ready to sin? A prophet. A prophet. I forgot his prophet name. Prophet Nathan. That's Nathan. in the 12 chapters. Yeah. 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 And in the 12th chapter, he didn't let him send him his prophet to talk to him because he don't feel like talking to him. God faces right against us, uh, Isaiah 59 and 2, was it 59 and 1? Yeah, this is a good one. Yeah, yeah 59 and 1 and 2 said that your house, uh, his hand is not short. No. And he cannot say, let's get us a scripture. You can use that scripture. And his ears are not heavy that he came here, as Isaiah 59 and 1 and 2 said, but your sin has separated you between you and your God. That's right. Now, what separated Jesus from God? He said, my God, my God, sin. why sin. hast thou forsaken me? Sin. I, I want y'all to understand these scriptures. Yeah. Yeah. That's it, Brother Mike. And God could not lick on sin. He's holy. Right. And people talk about they have no relationship. Yeah, you might be having a relationship with God, but it ain't the God that I know. <laughs> We got 12 chapter, the first verse. And the Lord said to Nathan to David, and he came unto him and said to him, There are two men in one city, one rich and the other poor. Now Nathan going to run a parable, a proverb on, on, on David. He's gonna, he gonna run this on. That's a good one. And gonna set him up. He's not gonna talk directly to what he did. He's gonna use an example of what he did. That was God. Then they're going to ask him, what do you think, what you think he's going to do? What do you think he should do about it? What they were saying, brother. Kill him. Kill him. Kill him. Kill him. And, and, and what the prophet told him, brother. Yeah, you, 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 you that man. Brother Mike knows some of you. He can okay. teach you. Y'all come over here. Brother Mike can teach you. Okay. You that man, David. You the one did it. I just used the parable to trap you with. The rich man had exceeded many flocks and herds. So he was rich. He had a lot of wine. This man ain't had but one ewe lamb. He had one wine. They had all these wine. Now you're going to see God dealing with him to Sunday matter because he said, David, if you lost anything, I do all you have to do is ask. Huh? You have not. Because you asked. David, if you want more women, <laughs> back then you can't do that today. Now y'all leave that alone, man. I tell you, you can't have but one. But back then you can have more than one. He said, Daddy, if you, if you, if you lack in it, out of gate, would you call the people to talk about me? When you sin against God, you call other people to talk about God because you're the one that did it and they're so looking at you to do right. Mm -hmm. It's going to be an example yeah. that you serve in God. <laughs> Oh my God. Where did preacher come from? Bum up Texas, 777 03 1375 East Jerusalem. Thank you. All right, let's look at the third verse. But the poor man had nothing save one little ewe lamb, 
which he had bought and nourished up. And they grew up together with him and with his children. It did eat of his own meat, drank of his own cup, and laid in his bosom, and was unto him as a daughter. Fourth verse, there came a traveler unto the rich man, and he spared to take of his own flock and of his own herd, to dress uh, for the wayfaring man that he was coming to him, but took the poor man's lamb, dressed it for the man that he was coming to him. Look at David. He didn't let him get angry here, now in the fifth verse. And David's anger was greatly kindled against the man, and said to Nathan, as the Lord liveth, this man done his thing shall what? Surely die. As the Nathan will tell you, you are that man, David. Now he brought judgment on his own self from his words. But God forgave him. Because he repented. But then he had to pay for the consequences. His own son took his kingdom lay with his concubine and that was prophesied by Nathan that God spoke that through him what he's going to do today. Meditation on God's law day and night when you're getting ready to sin meditate on that and it'll stop you from doing wrong. David didn't meditate. His meditation was on doing wrong. cost him. And he shall restore the lamb for but he did not this thing because he had no pity. Seven bread. Nathan said to David, thou art that man. David, you the one. Mm -hmm. Took that man's wife. All the women you had. Thus said the Lord God of Israel, I'm not to be king now. He didn't let really tell him what God did for him. What he did for David. Over Israel, and I delivered thee out of the hand of Saul. <clears throat> now notice he's a naughty king. People think because you're naughty, you can just do anything against God. Don't let that devil lie to you like that. <laughs> that is a lie. Eight five. I gave thee thy master's house, thy master's wife into thy bosom. Gave thee the house of Israel and of Judah, if it had been too little. Said David, if it had been too little, what I gave you, I would more have given thee much and such thing. I would have gave you more. Don't take the man wife. That's God speaking to the prophet. Look at Nigra. For I has despised the what? The commandment. You despise my commandments. They do evil in his sight. You had the man killed, committed adultery. You committed adultery, had the man killed, and stole his wife. You didn't obey my commandments. You didn't meditate on my law. The time to get ready to do this thing. Watch what else God say here. Of the Lord to do evil in his, in whose side? God's side. He was watching David. Did, did he try to stop David? Mm -hmm. Sometimes God will try to stop you. He wants to see if you're going to do what is right or do what is wrong. The Bible says he tries the hearts mm -hmm. and rends of every man. He don't try you to do evil. He tries to see if you're going to do what is right. The devil tried you to do evil. You're going to serve somebody in your trials. That's why it's good to meditate on the right thing. Thou hast killed you right the idiot with the sword. So that's why I need that. I know that false witness that they came with was wrong, saying he got shot. By the by the arrow. By the arrow. I told you I had something to back me up that they was lying. They was given false information. Why would God say that he had him killed? Because of the 
exactly what he did. Yeah. He told Joab to pull back. And Joab come and said he got killed by an arrow. We got too close to the wall. I do lie. In the report. God knows the report. He might lie to people. He might get over on them. But guess what? Preacher, deacon, choir members, you ain't gonna get over on God. Take his wife to be thy wife. And that slain, you took his wife. You had him killed, took his wife. With the sword of the children of Ammon. Now therefore the sword should what? Never, Never depart. depart. Never depart from thy house. He's going to bring judgment on David now. He ain't going to kill him. But he's going to bring some judgment on him. Because thou hast despised me. And has taken thy wife of your high the Hittite to be thy wife. So the way you despise God is by breaking his commandment, his laws and his statutes. You show that you don't love him. You despise him. You might not think you're doing it at the time that way, but this is what God said to David when he did. Because he didn't meditate on what God wanted. He meditated on what he wanted. Yep. As David. Let me burn. Thus said the Lord, Behold, I will raise up evil against thee out of thy own house. I will take thy wife before thy eyes, give it unto thy neighbor. He shall lie with the wife in the sight of the son. Now, who is that he used to do that? His son. His son. To his own kingdom and his son. He said, You even want to leave your house. It happened in his house. His own son. But I did this in secret. You did it in secret, David, I, but I saw you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you did it. You think you was doing it in secret where the people didn't see you. <laughs> but I did this in, in secret. But I'm going to do this thing before all this realm before the sun. And David said to Nathan, I what? Sinned against the Lord. Now he repenting. But he's still going to get it in chest. It ain't worth all that. Brothers and sisters. To go against God. Penalty could be too great. I have sinned against the Lord, and Nathan said unto David, The Lord has put away thy sin. The Lord has forgiven you for that, David. Thou shalt not die. So you ain't going to kill him. Because the way you sin is what? Death. He said, Okay, I'm going to forgive you for that, David. Because you repent. Don't, don't take a chance and see if God going to forgive you. Don't do that. I show you two scriptures in the Bible. Two people in the Bible that God didn't forgive. And they repent. Don't, don't play with God. God is not mocked. Whatever man sow it, that, he shall reap. that shall he reap. If you sow it to the flesh, you're going to reap death. If you sow it to the spirit, you're going to reap re life eternal. Because that thou did this deed, thou hast given great occasion to the end of the Lord to what? To blaspheme. Now, blaspheme means to speak evil. So David ended up giving occasion to speak evil of the God that he was serving because he was the one that was supposed to be an example on how to serve God. So by us being in this earth as believers today, we're the example to the world how to serve God. But if you act just like the world, how you going to be an example? Can't. You can't be no example of somebody you acting just like them. Lord have mercy. That's almost in there, Lord. And the Lord struck a man a child, and Nathan departed. He went to his house, him. 
Because here, here he said, and the child also that is born of you shall shall die. So he pronounced death to the child. And, and Nathan departed into his house, and the Lord struck the child that you are right bad and dead, and it was very sick. Now David went on a fast, thinking that God may change his mind. You need to go read the rest of that and study the rest of that. Amen. David went on a fast before God. And now when the, died, the child died, he eaten up everything. So the people were saying, wait a minute, David. When, when the child was sick, you fasted. Now the child dead, you up there eating and praising the Lord. And What's wrong with you, David? David said, wait a minute, I can't bring him back. David had enough sense to know that when God took the child out, he couldn't bring him back. What was the next child that that woman had? Samuel. 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 No, Samuel. Solomon. 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 Yeah. Solomon. Did God forgive him? Yes, he did. Because he raised up Solomon. Yeah, Solomon. Gave him wisdom. Gave him riches. God will forgive you. But I wouldn't take no chance on keep going against God. What happened to Solomon? He went the against God. man in the world. Went against God. Wrote about them women, what he did. Just like his dad. <laughs> we got to buy them generational curses, Brother Young. Because I was talking about the lust for demons. You know, we got to bind these generational curses. Y'all heard what Sister Kim, she wrote. Bind them up. You got, you got to bind them devil in, uh, in, in your generation of curses. To stop them. Yeah. And you got Jesus to help you. Yeah. To break that curse of your life. So you don't act like you the rest of your family, amen, until you're born again. You're in another family. You ain't got to act like them. You know what? You're in another family. You got to break that curse. Mm -hmm. Jesus Christ hung on the tree. Curse is he that hanging on the tree. You got a way out of this thing. You can use it if you want to. If you don't, you can stand in the curse. Jesus. No, thank you. Uh oh, we not out of we not out of word. We are running out of time again. Let's give us a give a break of that. Give a lot of hand clap. Amen. We want to meditate. Amen. When God's walk day and night, when we under pressure, when we get ready to sin, uh, meditate uh, on God's law and His commandments, so you won't do it in Jesus' name. Amen. Give a lot of hand clap. Thank God for that word.